Sorry about that one, fella. I just had to finish off my ice cream. Oh, really? Why did that take so long? I uh, had to wait for it to cool down. Ugh. Right, well, let's talk a little bit about today's mystery. Or shall I say, it's not actually very much of a mystery because it's our first case where we've actually... It's already solved. It's before, done. Before we can solve it. But this is such a crazy case that we thought we got to bring this to you guys. Sure you want to see what it's doing? Do we really have to? <laughs> you know, it's just, I'd rather be as less, you know, what I'm going to be. to be a video New questions about Dahlia DiPolito. Dahlia DiPolito. Dahlia DiPolito. Dahlia DiPolito. Dahlia DiPolito. Dahlia DiPolito's ex-husband took the stand facing the woman convicted of trying to have him killed. Talk to me, Chip. I want to know a little bit more about Mike and Dahlia DiPolito and where this all happened and just Get me started on this case. That's not a problem, I've got you. Anyway, Florida, 2009. Now before Mike and Dahlia actually met, Mike went to prison for running a boiler room stock operation. Can you explain just quickly before we go any further, what exactly is a boiler room stock operation? It usually say like a call center of high pressure salespeople. They'll call up a list of investors and you know, basically they'll scam them. Okay. Okay, so Mike has pled guilty to his crimes. He served two years in the Florida State Prison, and then he served 28 years of probation. Now, you know, probation where if he does one minor hiccup, he's done, he's gone back down. Really? Oh, wow. 28 years, that's a long time. He can't make a single mistake in those 28 years. Not one. Dahlia moved to Florida when she was younger. She grew up to become a real estate agent and also an escort. Right. And she was also previously engaged to another Mike. He goes by the name Mike Stanley. I feel like all the time in these crime you know, stories and cases, we always have names that get really confusing. So let's just clear things up really yes. quickly. We've got Mike Stanley, who she was previously engaged to. Yes. Right? And then we've got Mike DiPolito, who she, is, she goes on to meet and this story is, is essentially all about. Correct. Okay. Now, she ends up meeting Mike DiPolito in 2008 while she was working as an escort and she, he was actually also married. Okay, but... When you say married, they were actually already separated and they were going through the stages of getting a divorce and yeah. things like that. So it wasn't like a big cheating thing, but it was pretty soon after um, his, his his first marriage. Yes, yeah, so okay. he's paid for an escort. That's how they've met. Right. Four months later, they've actually gone and got married. Dahlia and Mike. Did really? Later. Yes, four months. Mate, these lot move so quick. So a month after Dahlia meets Mike DiPolito, um, he actually ended up saying, I, I'm i gonna break up with you. I'm not really feeling it, whatever it was. And she did not like that at all. Now, she was one of those people that, um, you know, it, they always, always the male attention was on her. She, she, she literally said she had never been broken up with before. Uh, and so this was all very new to her. She maybe hadn't felt rejection like this before. Um, and it was all very alien to her. Mm -hmm. So in mid-January 2009, mm -hmm. they decided they would go and meet up for some coffee, just have a bit of closure about the relationship. It is what it is type thing. Seal things off nicely. Yeah, that sounds nice. Yeah, it does. Sounds um, lovely. Yeah, so they went for a bit of coffee and it turns out that Mike actually decided to propose to her. Wow, I saw that coming, coffee shop. Yeah, what, what, what a proposal. wonderful thing. Now, he didn't actually even have a ring on him, oh, no. but he, he literally just proposed to her in this coffee sort of restaurant, uh, <sighs> cafe, um, where they were originally going there just to have a bit of closure about their relationship. And they ended up getting married in January 31st, 2009. It is a true Romeo and Juliet love story. It's like me and you. I'm not quite sure that is what it's just like, a little actually, bit. Chip. Just a little bit. Okay. <laughs> now, a lot of this case actually boils down to the restitution money that Mike owed. Now, if you're wondering what that is, it is basically the money that Mike owes for the crimes that he was found guilty for. Sure. So it was around $219,000 that he had to pay back. Right. Now, this Dahlia found this to be a bit of a problem. She felt it was limiting their lifestyle. It was stopping them from living a certain way. And they were worried, well, she was worried that they were gonna be paying this back for the rest of their lives. Yeah. Yeah, okay. it's a lot of money. So what Dahlia did was she offered to put up $91,000 of her own money 
as long as Mike would get the rest of the $100,000 and that would cover the entire restitution and take him off probation. Now, the reason it comes to $191,000 is because Mike actually already managed to pay off from $219,000 to $191,000. Yeah, if she's saying, I'll put up $91,000, you would be thinking, wow, she's a real one. Yeah. I am, um, I like, this is incredibly what, generous what a catch. you. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> and of course, Chip, it's never quite that simple never. on the fellas. It, it, we're, we're, this cra case is so nuts, it was never gonna be that easy, right? So uh, what happens is that Mike hands over the 100,000 that he was gonna pay um, to pay off his restitution. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Dahlia coming in with the other 91,000. Yeah. So he gives Dahlia the 100,000, there you go. And your job is to go and give that to Mike's lawyer, yes. okay? And then from there, he'll go through the formalities and get things paid off. Now, a few weeks go by and Mike's lawyer tells him, I've not got any money. Oof. I, I, I don't have the money that I'm supposed to have or that you're telling me I should have. Um, obviously, this is a massive red flag. Huge. And he, he then confronts Dahlia saying, where's the money? And she's just coming up with loads of different excuses and just drawing it on. And if, I mean, you want to talk about red flags, Chip? Come on. Yeah, possible fraud watch situation here. Some time goes by and Mike's lawyer uh, reminds Mike, look, we've not received any of this Still money. not got the money. No money. So they decide to confront Dahlia mm -hmm. and she says that she's fallen victim to a scam. She's lost the money to a scam. Now, we spoke about this already. Mike used to be a scammer. So here she's kind of playing on the heartstrings a little bit. Like, yeah. oh, he, feel, he feels sorry for her maybe. You know, she knows what she's doing. Yeah. She's trying to manipulate him. Anyway, she tells Mike that she's going to pay back the money that she's lost by through the commission of the houses that she sells. Yeah. She's a real estate agent, remember? And instead of Mike being completely angry at her, he's proud of her, like for admitting it, coming forward, like owning up to only, it. Like he's he's a sucker right here, right? <sighs> Bro, like come on. Yeah, that's it's sus. Come on, man. Sus. You, 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 you can't fall for that, no. surely. So while all that's going on, let's not forget that Mike is on probation. Yes. Okay. And what ends up happening is that in March, some probation officers come round, uh, pay him a little visit. Uh, which is relatively normal to pay a visit, but then they said that they'd had an anonymous tip that Mike had been selling. Someone snitched. Yeah, someone, so, someone snitched, uh, an anonymous snitch, yeah. um, said that he was selling steroids and ecstasy. So what ends up happening is they conduct a search in his house. And he said that, you know, over his six years so far of probation, nothing like this had happened. Um, and it was just a bit weird that he had got an anonymous tip mm -hmm. from, from a, uh, to the probation officers, right? That was just one time. After that, they continued to come round. These probation officers kept coming round with these anonymous tips, mm. but they just kept finding nothing. Okay. Right, which is all, uh, all a bit sus. And Mike said to Dahlia, like, yeah, this is really stressing me out. I'm struggling with this. They're constantly coming around and almost harassing, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it had been so frequently. So Dahlia decides, right, well, I'm gonna take him out on a nice trip to a Ritz hotel, right? Now keep in mind she had just fallen victim to a scam um, for the money that she uh, she had taken off of Mike. Um, and now she has this money of hers that she can just, um, she can just go on these nice little expensive trips away to the Ritz as well. Yeah. Seems a bit sus if I'm perfectly Definitely. honest with you, Chip. Yeah. They do a nice afternoon tea at the Ritz. Oh, well, uh, I'm sure they got to enjoy that. Now, when they were at the Ritz, mm -hmm. once again, an anonymous tip. Oh. And the probation officers turn up again whilst they were away. Mike's having a tough time right now. He is, he is. And who are these anonymous tips coming from? It didn't stop there. One night after dinner, in the car park, they get stopped by the police again due to another anonymous tip. So it was another search, but this one was more thorough. In fact, they even brought the sniffer dog. So they take the dog round to the back of the SUV and find 1.5 grams of coke in a cigarette packet. Now, obviously, Mike is distraught. He claims it's not his. Of course, um, as you would. He even says he's down to do a drugs test. He's completely sober, almost yeah. even starts breaking down crying. And the police can see that because they see that he's so shocked over yeah. this incident. It's almost as if like all these uh, other tips mm -hmm. uh, that had been going on. And obviously the police officers had gone and searched, but they just weren't finding it. 
but all these tips and constantly knowing where they are. And look, this has the person that's giving them tip has to know what he's doing, where he is. And then not only that, but I feel like in those initial ones where the house is getting searched, there probably was some drug somewhere. I just have a feeling that the police just Maybe never didn't found them. Find it. Never yeah. found them. And it's on you know, someone's planting something here. Yeah, so somebody's maybe planted that coke and in, yeah. in the anonymous tip they said there was coke in the car. Yeah. When this is all over, Mike actually confronts Dahlia about it and says, Was that your coke? And she gets completely defensive. Right. Uh -huh. Saying it wasn't hers. Yes, of course. She's she's obviously gone straight on the defensive like that ain't mine. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Not looking good right now. No. So obviously that had all happened, but we can't forget the money that Dahlia still owed. Now there was a big farce around mm -hmm. it. It all got very confusing. Um, but ultimately, Mike ends up once again confronting Dahlia saying, where is this money? I need this money. He had been through the absolute ringer with everything. Mm -hmm. And of course, what does Dahlia do? Completely disregards that and says, I'm pregnant. She's she's just come out and dropped a bombshell on him. An absolute bombshell. Now, if if that's anyone, you go, oh my god, I'm about to have a kid, and your all your focus and everything shifts to Th that. This case is just you know it's going one direction, straight to another, to another direction. One. I swear. Dahlia is moving. Almost dancing at her. She's moving slippery. Yeah. Yes. Now, like I said at the beginning of this, this story just keeps getting crazier and crazier. And here we are coming up to to, to a bit that's just blows my mind. Enter character Mohammed Shihadi, right? Talk to me and tell me a little bit about this bloke. Now, Mohammed is a friend of Dahlia. She's yeah. known him since she's about 18, 19. And she's recently bumped into him while she's married to Mike. So Dahlia tells Mohammed that she's in an abusive relationship with a man that sells drugs and is on probation. Now, it's important to note, Mohammed was on Xanax and he can't remember exactly what's happened, but he thinks that something has happened between them and that Dahlia has told him she tried to frame Mike. Oof. I mean, imagine that. You, you you bump into an old friend, you see an old friend, mm -hmm. and you just get unloaded with all of this, or yeah, at least he thinks yeah. so. Anyways, obviously he he was he was high, or he you know he was on Xanax, so you you, you got to take it with a bit with yeah. a pinch of salt. But ultimately, that would be pretty crazy to hear from an old friend. I swear this story. Mohammed also claimed she had a meeting with some gang members about killing Mike, but the gang in the end refused because the house was covered in alarm systems, motion detectors, and it was just generally an impossible task for them. Um, and the gang also told Mohammed that she was just pretty much crazy. <laughs> they cut off all contact with her. Right. And then even better, Dahlia tells Mohammed that she lied to Mike and his mother about being pregnant with Mike's child. As if that would like, I felt, of course she would like, she was already under some heat, under some fire for that 200 grand, just shot at 200 grand, where uh -huh. is it? She pulls out the pregnancy card, and obviously that ended up having to be fake. And then not only that, uh, that but we just glossed over the fact that she's literally trying to have Mike killed. And it was so nuts that even the gang members said, no. No. <laughs> this ain't no. happening to you. Not today. Your, your plan is pretty crazy if even gang members go, we're not feeling this one, Dahlia. Yeah, not happening. So if you want some more stuff that really just paints Dahlia in a terrible, terrible light, is the fact that Mike actually went uh, through with a procedure called liposuction. Right, um, you guys have probably heard of it. And um, he was on bed rest for two weeks, so he couldn't really do anything. He's resting after his surgery. What Dahlia would do would uh, bring him coffee every morning. Okay. You know, he was a coffee drinker anyways, but he would bring a coffee. And that coffee was Starbucks. Was Starbucks, was Starbucks. But what he was Starbucks. noticing around his mouth was, or on the inside, sorry, was that there were ulcers everywhere. And oh, he's thinking, no. oh, this is just a response to the surgery. Maybe it's something I'm taking for the surgery, whatever, he's resting, this has popped up. No. What ends up coming out, right, is that what Dahlia had been doing was putting antifreeze. Yeah? In the Starbucks. In the Starbucks coffee. Oh. To anyone that doesn't know what antifreeze is or what happens when you drink it, it's essentially poison. She was poisoning Mike while he was resting from his surgery. Unbelievable. Usually you would just put sugar in. 
<laughs> After six months of being married and countless attempts of getting Mike to go back into jail, to, to, to trip up on his probation mm -hmm. with all these anonymous tips that were coming out, which was blatantly Dahlia, right? Um, she ends up trying to hire a hitman oh. to kill Mike. Now, unfortunately for her, and this is where the, the whole case became so notorious and so famous, was um, that hitman she tried to hire was in fact a police officer. Um, and the reason for that was right. Mohammed, after hearing about all this stuff and the fact that she wanted to kill her husband, yeah. he was so concerned that she was actually gonna try and frame him for the murder. Ooh. So what did he do? He went straight to the police and told them exactly that. And that's how this whole setup essentially ends up starting. Mohammed went to the police and said, I'm worried. What can you guys do? That was smart and, for Mohammed. And, and they decide, right, let's bring him in. Let's take him in as an informant, wire him up, go out there, talk to Dahlia, and let's see how far she's willing to take this. In the meeting with Mohammed and Dahlia, where Mohammed is actually wearing a wire, um, there was recordings, everything set up. You can actually watch it on YouTube. I'm going to play you some footage shortly um, showing Dahlia agreeing to give a $1,200 deposit to Mohammed for the murder of Mike. For the hitman? Yeah. <sighs> Mate, this bird is nuts. So I went to buy my, eat my gun, okay? A couple hundred, you know, for other people to do things. Right. You know what I mean? When I had to explain to her, $400 is nothing. I had to buy a gun, I had to buy a phone, I had to buy this car. As she starts talking, what's going on in the minds of the police officers is, wow, this woman is real. This plot is real. Obviously, in a situation like this, the hitman's going to need to know what Mike looks like. So Dahlia does, in fact, hand over a picture of Mike as well, which is pretty much cementing it. This is what he looks like. Go and do the job. I have a picture of him right now. You're sure everything else is okay? Yeah. You're sure, sure. Yo, what more sure can you want? You're planning a murder. Come on. Stop, yo. It's August 3rd, 5.55 p.m. Yes. Two days before okay, the close. scheduled hit. Okay, she decides to meet up with the hitman who okay. ends up, or who is actually an undercover police officer. Mm -hmm. Because remember, this is all set up, right? And his name was Widdy Jean, right? And in, in this setup, again, once again, there is camera footage that mm -hmm. Florida had released, Florida State Police had released, right? And they've got two cameras in there. It's wired up. You can hear and see it all. It's the day of the murder. Dahlia goes to the gym at around 6 a.m. And while she's at the gym, the police are busy setting up a fake crime scene. We're talking yellow tape, all that kind of stuff. And the TV show Cops is actually also there. Mate, I'm not gonna lie. This genuinely sounds like, you know, like punked. Uh -huh. Remember punked? And they would come out and they would be like, haha, you've been punked. You thought your wife was gonna kill you. This is, this is so insane. And of course, only in America would they have it all recorded for a TV show. Absolutely. You're probably wondering why why that? Why is there a TV show involved mm -hmm. in this? Well, um, the uh, like Florida State Police, they all thought that it would actually be good promotion to show what they're doing for the community, keep, pe keeping people safe, and almost showing the lengths in which they're gonna go to. Um, and I, I don't know. I mean, it's just so America, isn't it? To, to do something like this, and a TV show called Cops is gonna have all the footage. We love you, America. You're probably wondering where Mike is in all of this now. On the morning of everything happening, you know, Dahlia's gone to the gym, the police are setting up the fake crime scene, they wake Mike up, and this is literally the first Mike is hearing of all of this, you know, she's planning to kill him, all of that stuff. Your wife has hired a person to kill you. Relax, just, just, just take, relax. take it easy. Take a deep breath. Ready, sit down. Could you imagine, mate, the, f the first time you hear it and you're being woken up by the police to say, um, yeah, we're setting up a fake crime scene yeah. because your wife is trying to kill yeah, you. you were about to be killed, but it's okay, we're here yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. And the yellow tape's out, by the way. Yeah, d ignore, sorry, we've just turned your entire house into a fake crime scene. Um, this is totally legit, by the way. I'm not, I'm not joking, if this happened to me, I would think you were up to some elaborate prank. Yeah, 100%. But we are filming for cops, so say hi. <laughs> yeah. Just waving at me, yeah. window. <laughs> Oh my God. So it's go time. The police officer finally makes a call to Dahlia and he leaves her a voicemail. This is Sergeant Frank Ramsey, Boynton Beach Police Department, Detective Division. 
I need you to call me as soon as you can, ma'am. It's urgent. Thank you. She actually calls that number back only seconds after receiving the voicemail, mm -hmm. and she gets told, you need to come back ASAP. Oh, it looks like she's waiting for the call. Here's her call. Sergeant Ramsey, can I help you? Okay, is this Miss Please? Okay, can you come right back to your residence, please? Ma'am, I'll tell you everything you need to know when you get here. Now, this next clip that we're about to show is what Dahlia had been preparing for. As far as she's aware, she's gonna be coming back and her husband is going to have been killed and the police are gonna be telling her that her husband has been killed. Little does she know that this is actually all a big undercover sting. This was her reaction. I'm Sergeant Ramsey, I'm, I'm the one that called you. Thank you for coming, I'm sorry to call you. Listen, we had a report of a disturbance at your house and there were shots fired. Is your husband Michael? Okay, I'm sorry to tell you, ma'am, he's been killed. No, 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 he's, no. he's been killed, ma'am. No, 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 no. Try to calm down. No. It's so poorly done, like the instant crying. Yeah. Like, it, 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 mate, it's on the dot. Like, surely it, you would go through almost like a state of shock and then it would all come out. Or like, even like, no, I don't believe you. You know, something like that. But no, it's just, even before he finishes his sentence, She's crying. I can imagine her just practicing in the bathroom, like looking in the mirror, like, Dahlia, you fucking got this. He's yeah, dead. He's Cry. Dead. Yeah. Cry. You know, just talking yeah. herself into it. Not only that, but she goes and instantly just hugs the police officer, uh -huh. um, which, you know, look, she, she's trying to get the police on the side. She's trying to yeah. make it seem as believable as possible. She wants to, she's trying to get that officer wrapped around her little finger. She's manipulative. Yeah. We've spoken about it. She's just doing everything she can in that moment to be like, feel sorry for me because it could never have been me yeah i just love the fact that this entire thing was filmed for a tv show mm -hmm. like yeah, we can't. have all the footage in the world to show you guys once that little bit had all finished up they took her back to the station mm -hmm. um sat her down and started asking her questions was he asleep when you left no because he said it sort of but not really because of his back he was just kind of like laying there he was just laying there and he set the alarm you know but I mean, I, there said, was no I, said, alarm. I, I said, you know, I'll bring you coffee on the way home and, you know, normal. At this point, the police have all the evidence they need, yeah. right? They had everything. But what they wanted to do was give her an opportunity um, to see if she'd crack and then also an opportunity to see if she would own up to it. Now, while all of that is happening and they're waiting to see how Dahlia, you know, handles those mm -hmm. questions, um, Mike is being shown all the footage uh -huh. of Dahlia setting, you know, trying, trying to get a hitman, just all this crazy stuff that had, ha that had been happening. I mean, I'll be honest, it is a terrible day for Mike and Dahlia. Dahlia is trying to give the police all these different reasons uh -huh. as to why it might be other people and not her. Uh, and the police are just sort of, you know, they're, they're playing up to it. But in their head, obviously, they know everything, right? And then what happens is um, Woody Jean, the undercover hitman, comes in and she's asked, do you recognize this man? You know who this guy is? No. You've never seen him before? I've never seen him before, ever. Do you know her? Put your head up and look at her. Put your head up. I've never seen him. Before. And the guy, the, the police officer asking her questions, just completely switches. He goes from this nice guy and he, he just turns into, oh yeah, by the way, we know everything. Uh, we have videos, uh, we have photographs, we have audio proof, we have, we have everything. You're going to jail today for solicitation of murder. You're under arrest. That's an undercover police officer. We filmed everything that you did, recorded everything that you did. And just to see if she will, she will she even admit it at this point, and she still continues to deny it. This woman is crazy. If there is ever a crazy, this is the definition of. Crazy. Well, this is. Nuts. They should put it in the dictionary. Crazy Dahlia. Dahlia, yeah, yeah, just Dahlia. Yeah. That's yeah. all I need to know. Having all that footage is just crazy, and to watch this unfold, and and knowing the whole time that it is this undercover sting. And the fact that she is just, she is dying on that hill. She is not accepting the fact that she did it. I didn't do anything. You're going to jail. I didn't jail. do anything, please. I didn't do anything. Tell me you didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. You're going to jail today. 
Um, even the bit where she calls in Mike to come into the room, she's like, Mike, come here. That voice was just so annoying, yeah. right? And second of all, like, why would Mike go into the room? You've tried to have him killed. Anything you say at this point is just irrelevant. She's and she's like begging sympathy still with the voice, like, yeah. Mike, please, please Mike, please. Mike. And he's just like, nah. Nah, not I'm not having this. Can't Remember Mike Stanley? This was Dahlia's first partner before Mike DiPolito. Yeah. And they'd, in the lead up to the murder, they'd been talking loads. Hundreds of texts and calls, all this kind of stuff. And they actually met up at a hotel on July 15th. And from the look of the text, it makes it seem like they had an affair. Mike Stanley admits that he was intimate at the hotel with Dahlia. And he was also with her sending anonymous tips to the police about the drugs that were in Mike's house. So he was part of it. So, so he, he was, was helping her sending those tips yep. to try and get Mike DiPolito back into prison. Yes, exactly. And that was because, um, you know, she's told Mike Stanley that they were in an abusive relationship. She thinks that, well, he thinks that maybe he's doing her a favor. Oh, we can get him sent down. You know, he's yeah. abusing her. Yeah. Oh my gosh, what a mess. Yep. What a Too mess. Too many turns in this story. She actually spent, obviously, the first night in jail, mm -hmm. and then she ended up going on house arrest. Um, she was allowed to leave for church and work, though. Um, right? Okay. Um, she had three different trials. Let me run you through them. In 2011, yeah. she was actually sentenced to 20 years. Oof. But, but, but it was overturned on appeal. Okay. Pain. Then in 2016, um, she actually had a hung jury. So it was tied 3-3 three, three in the jury. It's like a World Cup final. It, yeah, I suppose if you want to put it that way. Um, but her claim was that it was police entrapment. Essentially meaning that the police had set her up. It wasn't that great. Uh, she also used another argument, which was actually that the police had almost been playing up to the cameras, to the TV cops. Um, they had taken, like, essentially taken things way too far. It was all done for the cameras, and essentially. And it was slightly working in her favor. Well, but... yeah, it, 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 her, that was her defense. Her defense was that it was all just done for the cameras. They, they wouldn't usually do this. Well, I mean, it was a free, free jury, so somebody was obviously on her side. While she was in house arrest though, she actually ended up having a child um, to someone else named Robert Davis. Uh, um, but it was sort of believed that by her having a child, um, they would sort of be a little bit more lenient on her. Um, but ultimately that wasn't the case because in 2017, it took a six member jury, um, only 90 minutes to convict um, Dahlia DiPolito and uh, she ended up getting 16 years, um, but because she had already served eight under house arrest, she ha only had to serve the second half. So from 2017, she still had eight years to serve, mm -hmm. um, which means that she should get out around 2025. Um, obviously that's assuming she doesn't get out early or anything like that. Um, but yeah, her whole defense revolved around um, that TV show Cops mm -hmm. and, and, and how it was all theater and played up for the cameras and it things like that. It was never gonna work in reality though. She tried to get a fourth um, uh, a fourth trial, but it didn't work out for her. That got, that got turned down. So she does actually I have got to a, I've got to commend her because she just don't stop trying. Make all the evidence and proof and she's still like, she always had it like, no. Not, what not, about this? That's why about me. What, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't that? know that woman. It is just mind blowing. We've got the beginning bit where she uh, trying to scam him out of his money. Then the Starbucks poisoning, right? Nobody wants antifreeze in their vanilla oat milk latte. Okay. You've and, seen my order. You've seen my order. Not only that, right? The, the final thing, the big finale was that she had hired a hitman to kill him. I mean, 16 years, it is what it is. She, she's doing time now. And you know, she could be watching this. She's so crazy. She might even come after the boys, I'm the worried. fellas after this. Yeah, she's gonna drop a dislike on this video. No doubt. Maybe even a hate comment.
Oh my gosh. Right, so if you guys see any of those sort of comments, any dislikes, we, we know Dahlia's got her multiple different accounts. Yeah. Right? She'll be on a burner. Anyways, guys, if you did enjoy this episode, then be sure to subscribe. Obviously, leave your thoughts about this case down below. We'd love to hear about it. What do you think about Michael and Dahlia DiPolito? Nailed it. <sighs> Nailed it there. Yes, yeah, so and don't forget as well to turn on notifications by clicking the little bell just next to the subscribe button. So every time we upload, you can be right there. Naughty gang, you already know. Okay, fist bump back in the 60s. Is this not the 80s? Yeah. Whatever. Have a good day, guys, and we'll see you all for the next Mystery Mondays.